Hey friends, welcome back. I am so happy that you're here with me today. I've got some great patriotic trash to treasure projects planned and I'm excited to share them with you. So with Memorial Day and the 4th of July all right around the corner, I've been wanting to put some little festive things up outside of my door. Um, we don't have a lot of space outside of our door and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So let me show you what we're gonna work with today. So first of all, I found this ladder. It's actually something that I picked up on Marketplace off of Facebook a while ago and never used because I just didn't like it where I thought I was going to use it and it has been sitting around. So I want to make this work. And I also just had a few extra pots. So these and these will go together for a project. I also thought it'd be really cute to make a wreath to match. So in our Walmart, I was lucky enough to find bandanas on sale for 50 cents each. So I grabbed those in a wreath form. So we'll put these together. I'm gonna to show you how to make a super simple wreath that looks so cute for the front door. And lastly, this is another piece that when I grabbed, my husband asked me why I actually spent money on it. But I um, found this cabinet door, Goodwill, somebody already painted. Anyway, I have a fun little idea for this cabinet door as well, and I promise it will look super cute. That's what I told my husband. All right, so let's start with the pot. So the first step is not very exciting, but it is an important one. Anytime you paint a terracotta pot, if you don't seal it first, the water will be absorbed into the terracotta and it'll kind of leak out into your paint and you get weird splotchy watermarks. So before you start the fun stuff, it's really a good idea to use some sort of sealer and paint the outside and inside of the pot. I am gonna use the stain blocker because it's what I have on hand and I have a bunch of it. Um, but if you do it, I would recommend using polyacrylic. I don't have much of this left and I like to use what I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this, but I think polyacrylic is a great way to go. So let's just start off by sealing all of these pots off and then we'll get to the fun part. So I painted the inside all around the rim and then just right over the edge. And now I am gonna flip it upside down on an old shampoo bottle, just whatever you have works paint everything else. Definitely get the whole bottom area because that's where a lot of the water will collect and end up seeping into your terracotta if it's not sealed. All right, these are all sealed up and they just need a little time to dry. So while they are drying, I want to show you how to make literally the easiest wreath ever. It's so fun and so cute. Like I said, I lucked out and the bandanas in my Walmart are on clearance right now. I don't even know why, because these are adorable. But if you can't find bandanas, you don't even need to use bandanas. Just, I think this is 20 inches by 20 inches. So any fabric at all that you found and you could really customize it to any holiday at all. So I'm using bandanas, but the sky is the limit for this one. All right, so let's make this wreath. The first thing you'll want to do is just cut all of the bandanas in half. These are all cut in half and now let's start putting them on to the wreath form. So the first thing you want to do is just take a half a bandana and fold it into thirds like so. And then you can fold it in half one more time and what you're gonna do is kind of fold it in half like this, lay it under the wreath, and I'm making a loop here. You can see that with my fingers. And I'm gonna take both ends and just slide it through the loop and pull out. And that is it. Now, and when we're all done, we can go back and kind of fluff this and make that look really pretty. But first, I want to get all the pieces on. So, kind of like an American flag, I'm going to bunch the blue together in one spot and then go red, white, red, white, red, white all around the edges. Alright, how 
how cute is this red gingham? I think this just makes the wreath. I also think that this could be a really fun girls night because it's just so simple. I mean, you just are tying knots around the wreath form. No wires, no gluing, no cutting 3000 flower stems. I mean, it is just simple and fun. What am I doing? Wrong color. Does I tell you how simple it is? So as I got to the end of the wreath, I just have been kind of scooching the colors around a little bit to make room for each of the next ones. And we'll fill in the end here. So I am now just kind of going through and fluffing up some of these edge pieces. Here it is all finished. This was really easy. I think it took no more than 20 minutes. So add like a sign or put little wooden stars here. I think that there's a lot more you could do too, but I really love this. Now that the wreath is finished, we can work on these pots. The sealer is all dry. Do you see my dog in the background? He is beside himself that the girls are at his girlfriend's house without him. He's just been waiting and waiting for them. It's so sad. I don't have an exact plan for how I'm gonna paint these other than I just know that I want them red, white, and blue. And I either want to write God bless America on each one or home sweet home. So I'm gonna start out by putting some red, white, and blue on and then we'll just see what happens. I picked up this multi-surface paint um, to use for the blue because I picked up some multi-surface paint because I think that this stuff is, hi. So I picked up some, <laughs> right here. I was using that. So I got some multi-surface paint for these pots. I think that it's pretty durable and it'll hold up just fine outside. But if you happen to see patio paint or outdoor paint, that would be even better. They just didn't have that when I was there. So I like the durability of this, but I didn't love the bright blue color. So I'm gonna mix it with um, some English Navy just to darken it up a little. one white too. So now we're going to paint some red stripes on this. Yep. Okay. That's it, yep. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use painter's tape to put red stripes on. Yep. So like the girls said, I'm going to start by taping off little sections all around the pot that will stay white and then just paint the rest red. So I'm just gonna do one long piece that goes straight across either side. And then we'll crisscross another one going the opposite direction. And this way, each section is even, and we didn't even have to measure. The stripes will be a mix of multi-surface spiced red and candy apple. So I drew a star on some contact paper, and I'm just going to cut this out and make a little stencil to put on the blue pot. All right, so I'll put this on the blue pot and then paint over that to have a star right here. All right, and now I'm just gonna use some more multi-surface paint and fill in the stencil. So we have a little white star in the center of the blue pot. All right, now that these are dry, we're gonna just peel the tape off so that we should have some red and white stripes. All right, so there's one pot, and then we'll just do the same thing to the second one. So 
So I decided to write God Bless America on each of the pots and I printed out a stencil for each one. So the stencil's on and now I am just mixing up a little more of the same red that I made this pot with and I'll just sponge that right onto the stencil. So for the red and white pots, I am going to mix up some of this blue color for the words. Now, while these pots are drying, I have been looking at this ladder thinking that it would just be a lot more cohesive of a look if the ladder was white. And I'm not sure if I want solid white or whitewashed. So I'm gonna start with a kind of a whitewashed look, see how that looks, and then go from there. For this, I am just using my favorite Adirondack white chalk paint by Folk Art and an old chip brush. So I am going to just kind of roughly brush the paint on here real quick for a whitewashed look. Just kind of dry brushing, getting a lot of the excess off of my brush, and real quick, going over it like this. It's one of those things you just don't want to think about too much. The more you think about it, the harder it is. Just kind of slap that paint on there. You can always go back and add more. Now we can peel these off. and all the pots are dry. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna tie some twine. And then just tie it to the ladder like this. All right, so I took a nice long piece of twine and just folded it in half. And then I'm gonna go ahead and feed that through the bottom of the pot. And with the loop, I'm gonna take the oops, end of the twine, bring it up through the loop, and then that way we have like a little holder for the pot. And this is what I'll tie to the ladder. And then did the same thing for the other two pots. Last but not least, now to add some flowers. Lastly, we'll put a little flag in each pot. That turned out so cute. Now for this old cabinet door. First, I went ahead and took off the knob. Then with the same Adirondack white that I used on the ladder, I gave this a fresh coat of white paint. Now, originally when I got this cabinet door, I thought I would put the Pledge of Allegiance on it. But once I started painting it, I had an idea to paint a butterfly on it with the word freedom. The butterfly is in red, white, and blue so that it both stands for the freedom that we have in our country and because butterflies are such a beautiful example of the new life that we have in Jesus, it also stands for the freedom that we have in him.
Then using my silhouette, I made a stencil of the word freedom and went over that with red paint. The edges of the old cabinet door also got a little sanding to bring out the details. And here it is all finished with the stencil peeled off. I just love how it turned out and I love having this reminder of how fortunate we are to have the freedom that we do have. That is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed all of these red, white, and blue projects. If you did, please like and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.